I was flipping through this watercolor sketchbook and found an unfinished color study of Arwen. But before I can show you that painting process for continuity's sake, I had to dig up my footage of the Eowyn study next to it. This sketchbook really shows what happened to my art style over the last two or three years. The first pages are in watercolor and very focused on cute, colorful designs. And you can also see me dabble in like fan art for a bit, trying to paint humans for the first time in forever. And then I started to dabble in gouache and even later in acrylics and trying a more realistic approach. There are some studies in there from schoolism, classes and a few portrait studies, which is what I'm trying to show you today. The Arwen one here is still unfinished. I'd done a few gouache realism studies a while back, first in black and white, then trying to get the hang of color, and then moved towards acrylics last year. So this sketchbook has been through a lot, really. For these studies, I'm using the Sorn palette which really got me through pretty much the first half year of using acrylics. It's very simple, using just four colors. Cadmium red light, or a similar warm bright red, yellow ochre, black and white. I didn't have much experience with realistic painting at that point, so a simple palette helped streamline the mixing and decision making it's also a great exercise to see how you can use a limited palette to create a wide variety of hues. During the video you can see me using different brands of paints, as I was still using up a sample kit of tiny acrylic paint tubes back then, and also used some golden open paints to more easily mix and blend later on. Pencil sketch doesn't show up on camera well, as I used very light pencil strokes, so let's just skip ahead to the first color pass. I started with the darkest parts of the image, which is a technique I'd read a lot about. Looking at the shadows divorced from the actual shape you're trying to paint can help with accurate perception, so I'm approaching this very abstractly, ignoring her facial features and just going all in on the black. It also forces me to get a greater range of value from the very beginning. Now the first hints of color. Her skin tone here is painted mostly with yellow ochre and the cadmium red really only comes into the mix around her cheeks and nose. The exact colors really don't matter all that much. Anders Zorn reportedly used vermilion, but any warm red will do, for example. A cool black is helpful though, to balance the warm red and yellow tones.
reason I painted a lot of the rings study to get better at color perception and mixing with a Zorn palette is pretty simple. Scenes in those movies have some very deliberate lighting. The colors are often earthy and toned down, and there are so many scenes with a warm light, as if candle or fire lit. If you're using a palette like the Zorn palette, warmly lit scenes are really the easiest place to start. And it's why I left room next to Eowyn for a much cooler portrait of Arwen, for the challenge of mixing blue and green hues out of the four colors mentioned. It's like the advanced mode challenge next to the easy mode. After the first color pass, I had the overall palette established and the portrait really didn't look like Eowyn at all. This stage can be discouraging, but it usually turns out fine. I just like to focus on one thing at a time, so in this case, values first, colors and their saturation second, and now, to get an actual resemblance of the actress, the second color pass. This part of the painting process is my favorite. The worst is behind me, she looks vaguely human, and her skin looks real. There's some color or other everywhere, there are no white spaces left. And I can now just fiddle with details. This is also when the open acrylics came in handy, as I wanted softer blending at this stage. The open paints have a slower drying time, so even at my usual snail's pace, they didn't dry up on my palette, or the sketch itself, while I was still working on it. By the way, I'm painting in an Arsh watercolor sketchbook. The paper is cold pressed, so it does have a little bit of a texture, and to be honest, I really don't like it all that much. It soaks up watercolors very quickly and makes them difficult to reactivate, which is why I barely used it after my first few sketches a few years ago. One day I decided to just use this watercolor sketchbook for acrylic studies instead, and even added two or three layers of gesso on the pages here to make it a better fit for acrylic paints. It's not really what this sketchbook was meant for, but I didn't want to leave it nearly empty or force myself to work with a paper texture that didn't fit with my painting technique. At some point, the portrait started to look a little bit like the actual character, even if the face is a bit too round overall still. That's what you get for being impatient and not properly sketching your proportions right. Two years ago, Lord of the Rings landscapes were some of the first realistic color studies I tried my hands at when I switched to using gouache, so it feels nostalgic to then use the same movie to inspire acrylic paint studies. I am excited to show you the Arwen color study too, as it was very challenging. 
Let me know if you'd like to see a proper sketchbook tour, as I've honestly got way too many sketchbooks and the art in them is all over the place, so it might be chaotic but fun to take a look at those. Thank you for watching, bye.